Hello, dear friends. Here we'll uh, take it from where we left off in the episode 13 about the final days of uh, the Antichrist chap, who by then would have seen his days of glory. He would have uh, created so called uh, prosperity on earth for a couple of months, or who knows, maybe one or two years even. Prosperity, uh, which even his own followers uh, could not have enjoyed, sadly, because of the constant state of uh, depression and uh, mental agony. But somehow, uh, maybe even a third of the humanity could have made it alive uh, to that point. And uh, the Muslim sources uh, describe the situation that uh, what is in the Bible called South Alliance the Muslim just uh, call it the uh, alliance with uh, their Muslim United Forces and other parties, which they don't mention by name, so it's the same thing, we'll call it the South Alliance. They are besieged and uh, reduced to just a handful of people. Actually, that siege is also described in the Catholic uh, prophecies. Quote, when the righteous and the followers of truth shall separate themselves from the wicked and flee into solitudes. And when he hears of this, the impious king in anger uh, will come with great army and bring up all his forces, will surround all the mountains in which the righteous are. But they, when they shall see themselves to be shut on all sides and besieged, will call upon God with a loud voice and implore the aid of heaven, and God shall hear them and shall send from heaven a great king to rescue and free them. And by the way, some of the parties which are most likely to be members of this uh, South Alliance have already started to form local unions uh, during the last year, I'm not going to mention which are they by name, because, uh, of course, the best ones have been already portrayed uh, in the mass media uh, for exactly the opposite of what they are, so due to fear of low rating of my video, I'm not going to name them. So, according to the Muslim sources, um, the first official and uh, seen and understood by all appearance by Christ will take place at the mosque of uh, the White Domes, the White Minarets of uh, Damascus, which is kind of uh, to be expected because uh, most of the military action will be around the place of uh, the Antichrist. It is uh, supposed to be 44 hours uh, walk or just a couple of hours drive uh, from the most famously believed location of the Hill of Armageddon and uh, this uh, minaret in Damascus. The prophecies that uh, Christ will descend exactly in the Umayyad Mosque were written down even at the time when it was not built. Uh, it was just described as... Uh, its current location and its white uh, minarets which dominate the landscape. So the mosque was well described in the prophecies century before the idea of its project even uh, came to existence. And uh, now we say that we know about it from the Muslim prophecies, uh, but if you remember the episode on the religions in the Survivors of Atlantis series, at that time, uh, actually, Christianity and Islam were most likely one and the same religion. So, probably, simply, uh, the Muslim texts uh, underwent a little bit less censorship uh, over the ages. So this is the Umayyad Mosque, inside it is very ornate and magnificent and is the place of the burial shrine of uh, John the Baptist. The modern explanation, the Penguinian explanation of that is that, oh, it must have been originally a Christian place and later on it became Muslim. But uh, seeing how much... Uh, Islam and Christianity actually share the same uh, stories. They have the same angels, hierarchy, names of all the prophets, angels, everything is the same. The stories told in uh, both type of scriptures that uh, I see only this as uh, the most 
obvious proof that the new chronology is the best attempt to recreate our history and that uh, Christianity and Islam were one and the same teaching a very long time ago. For example, most people would imagine uh, that uh, John the Baptist would be a purely Christian figure, however he is equally revered in Islam and uh, the Muslim people respect and uh, come to do pilgrimage to his uh, shrine as well. And because he is an equally respected uh, figure in the Islam as it is in Christianity. And we don't know what exactly was uh, removed and edited and re-edited in the Christian sources through the ages, but there is this interesting detail what the, do the Muslim sources tell about the crucifixion of Christ, or at least some of them, because they also have uh, different uh, Muslim branches with uh, slightly different variations of the story. And I find one of these versions particularly impressive, uh, namely uh, that uh, Christ uh, in, in his uh, form in flesh at that time, probably 1,000 years ago, well, according to some sources, 2,000, but anyhow, that's not important. He didn't uh, have to go through the horrors of uh, physical crucifixion himself. However, somebody else was uh, crucified and later on uh, the rumor spread that it was actually Christ. That's in the Muslim sources. And uh, amazingly enough, this is exactly the same story that appears in the set material as uh, channeled by Jane Roberts. According to Seth, the crucifixion existed only as a mental idea, as a concept. And as far as the uh, actual event, which later on uh, took that shape in the stories, some other uh, person uh, got crucified and he was indeed a thief and a criminal. So anyhow, when the Christ appears for the second time, again in flesh, the first public appearance, so to say, uh, will be, he will come from heaven so that everybody can recognize what's happening, holding uh, two angels on the shoulders he will descend on two angels and he will wear a robe of a light yellowish color and there will be a magnificent like uh, drops of uh, dew on his hair and face and they will shine like uh, pearls or gems and that will happen in the morning in the Umayyad mosque at that time this uh, last group of righteous people their spirit uh, would have already left them, they would have waited, waited for Christ, but uh, it would really appear uh, that they have uh, lost even the last battle, and the enemy, the marked people, uh, would be uh, loudly celebrating already all around the world uh, that they have de defeated the last uh, stronghold of the terrorists. And the besieged people... Uh, would have decided themselves that it seems there is no hope anymore. And in the morning, uh, they decided after their last prayer to simply open the doors of the besieged city and uh, meet their fate. And during that last prayer, after the call for prayer was made, uh, Christ descends behind the Imam who started the prayer. Of course, everybody immediately recognized him. Uh, they were waiting for him uh, since years anyway. And the Imam also would recognize him and he would offer him, although they are Muslims, they are expecting Christ actually much more than the Christians, I would say, at least more uh, consciously, more with understanding what to expect. And the Imam would offer him to lead this prayer, but Christ would reply, Islam has been uh, given by the Lord as the right path for you, uh, the people of the Arabic Peninsula. That is why you should continue with this prayer, because this path is for you. Actually, contrary to the lies spread by the mass media, the true Islam is a religion very tolerant and very wise in relation to other religions. True Muslims who read their books and respect them, it is clearly written there. 
God has given in different areas of the world uh, the law under different forms, and that's how they will be judged. The Christian people will be judged according to the Christian law, the Muslim people according to the Islamic law, etc. It is very sad that Islam has been uh, infiltrated in a very clever way, and uh, of course the people who infiltrated it, they did it very cunningly, and then exactly what they changed and twisted, uh, that's what they magnified. And exactly those small lies that seem exactly to be like true, that what was magnified by the media, and uh, that's uh, what they substituted the real Islam with. So sadly, uh, most of the people uh, in the West uh, have the wrong picture about Islam. And it's not only them, uh, they are infiltrated uh, fractions amongst the uh, originally Muslim people as well. Uh, Locally, uh, the true Muslims actually don't consider them Muslims, but in the West, they are surely called Muslims, so it is uh, quite a complicated situation. And all Muslims uh, should be extremely careful because uh, this infiltration, this rotting, is not just on the periphery. Uh, there is uh, rotting also in somewhere in the central structure. I don't know exactly where, but uh, one of their main imams uh, he is uh, one of the prominent members of this uh, ecumenical, whatever fraternity, brothership nonsense thing. The basis of which uh, is, uh, as he already signed, my religion is wrong and it needs to be corrected. This is something uh, in which for the Muslim world they cut one, one's throat straight away without any further explanations. But uh, he's still doing well uh, and he's still on a responsible position. So Muslim brothers and sisters, be careful. There are traitors amongst you, many of them. And this is a very sad report uh, from Jordanian Muslim. He calls the community in the Middle East are oppressed by governments. They don't allow anyone to talk or even pray in mosques these days. Recently they allowed worship only for one hour on a Friday. The people are so poor that they would do anything just to feed their kids. So sorry for getting sidetracked, let's return to the Umayyad mosque where Christ has uh, just appeared. So what happens is they open the gates and uh, the Antichrist, the fake Christ, he is surprised to see the real Christ uh, coming out of the gates and he resorts to running and he tries, tries to melt away with black magic, as it is described in the Kalki Purana. Probably uh, the same scene is described over there. He is uh, called, the Antichrist is called the Kali Demon, which means the black demon. So they also say that he tries to escape by melting, by uh, evaporizing so that he can appear in the next Kali Yuga and uh, begin the same fiasco once again. But Christ stops him and uh, uh, kills him with his sword so that uh, everybody can see and nobody will have any doubts in terms of uh, him escaping. And as far as his uh, reappearance uh, in the next Kali Yuga, According to Alexander Paramonov, this will be the last of all Kali Yugas. He did manage to do so in the previous Kali Yugas, uh, but this time this cycle will be over. So what happens then? It seems uh, the fighting is not yet over, as indicated by the Muslim sources and also uh, by Otrok Vyacheslav. Then the episode with uh, Juj and Majuj starts. There is an entire episode with that. Uh, so Christ, together with the small surviving army, they have to continue hiding and fighting for some time in the mountains. Otrok Vyacheslav just uh, said that uh, there will be so much action at that time, it is uh, hard to imagine, because uh, the righteous people, uh, they will achieve such a high position if they uh, manage to to survive through all that without uh, taking the mark, that they will be put through thick and thin to prove 
what they have learned, how pure their soul is and for their soul to get tempered in all these uh, adventures. So he said, there will be souls who will even betray Christ even after his appearance, because there will be a war uh, for some time even after that, apparently, uh, between the appearance of Christ and the final judgment, uh, there will be some uh, span of time uh, during which uh, all the armies of the Antichrist uh, will be finally annihilated, because even when the chief is gone, the people will be completely uh, zombified. The marked people, they will be unable to, to think for themselves. So all they will know is just uh, to kill and destroy until the end. Uh, they will be incapable of switching to human mode again. So they will have to meet their end somehow through self-destructive wars. Now, if you remember, uh, during prayer time, uh, Christ said that uh, Islam is given to you people, so I cannot uh, lead the prayer, it's better for you to do it. And then I heard uh, one very famous and respected uh, Muslim preacher to uh, cite, to say that in scripture it is said that uh, Christ will be born amongst the Roman people, and that's how they call the Caucasian race. I could not find the exact uh, quote with this information, but this preacher, he was very careful to speak only according uh, to what uh, he has read in some scripture or, or another. The Muslim people also have their grades of uh, reliable and non-reliable sources, so since this is uh, not frequently mentioned, probably it will be somewhere in uh, some of the more obscure sources, but there is such a hint. In the Catholic prophecies, uh, there are many hints uh, that uh, Christ will come from the East, so some place uh, east of uh, Western Europe. That's the hint uh, we get there. We also uh, get some hints that he will be of uh, Caucasian, Roman origin, but this is uh, too vague, of course. The spirit of Seth, uh, he mentioned more than 40 years ago that uh, Christ is being uh, born at that uh, time, around that time. I don't know in which year that was exactly dictated, uh, but um, he said, I'm not going to mention in which uh, country because that will spoil the theater, but I can assure you uh, that he is getting born and he will be coming back in a way very similar to the uh, way he came uh, last time. And sorry for not mentioning earlier, uh, but uh, you don't need to uh, look at, at the screen uh, when you listen to this video. From now on I will try to structure my videos in such a way that you can uh, comfortably cover your screen with foil. Later on in this video I will explain again why I recommend so. And uh, the content will be uh, mostly audio so that people can safely watch without at least uh, having their uh, eyes fixed on the monitor. So back to the uh, origin of uh, the birth of Christ in this uh, expected incarnation, which is probably already living amongst us. Um, first of all, uh, I've heard only Muslim people wonder about this. Uh, will Christ be born like the last time and have childhood and uh, seemingly uh, ordinary human parents? Or will he just appear the first time when he descends uh, on the angels? And uh, usually most uh, uh, Muslim scholars say it is uh, most likely that it is the first option and he will have a proper human family. Of course, if we look into Hinduism, over there uh, there is a much longer history of uh, incarnations or uh, so to say sons and daughters of God in uh, Christian terms. And um, over there we see varieties. Sometimes they get born or let's say half of the time, and sometimes they just appear magically. Uh, both are possible. But as far as Kalki, uh, 
uh, who is very likely nobody else but uh, Jesus Christ himself, he will uh, get born from a real human uh, parents or probably has already been born and he will be, uh, so to say, kind of a ordinary looking human or at least uh, uh, he will look like that to many. This is also what is happening according to Alexander Paramonov as well. According to Christian people actually I couldn't uh, find the opinion of uh, any real uh, Christian scholars. First of all I barely uh, know any that I would even respect and consider through Christians. Uh, there are not many of them and I have not uh, heard even a single one of them even ponder upon this question. So I guess uh, Christians don't even think much about how exactly will Christ come. But I agree with them. The important is uh, that he will surely come. Edgar Casey also, uh, it seems few times, said that most definitely in the way we have seen him go, he will return, Christ will return. Also in the vast ocean of the internet I found uh, what was published as uh, prophecies of the Eskimo, Eskimo woman. She talks about uh, a major volcanic eruption and then uh, the Savior, his arrival will be very very soon. The air will smell of roses everywhere so that people will know what is happening. I think this is very practical because so many people will be in hiding at that time that there will be some, uh, the need of some sort of uh, sure sign. Also in these uh, prophecies the total crash of the stock market is mentioned which is not difficult to predict uh, now. And... Uh, also the return of communism together with the concentration camps in Russia. And also in this uh, text uh, which I have been unable to verify, she talks about a golden cross appearing above the Great Pyramid and remaining there for seven days. Other Christian prophecies also mentioned a cross seen in the skies. Nostramus, Vegas usual, this could be a reference to the appearance of the Savior, the Eastern man will come down from his throne and across the Apennines into France through the sea and the air and will strike the evil ones with his rod. If this is not a reference to Christ, then it will be probably uh, the pious king from Russia, somewhere mid-tribulation, also Jehenny and the uh, Catholic prophecies, they talk about uh, some sort of such alliance that will come uh, from Russia at some point. So maybe this pious king is the great monarch or uh, maybe not. And this is one of the countless um, Catholic uh, prophecies about the great monarch or uh, who knows, maybe it could be also uh, interpreted as uh, the appearance of Christ, uh, usually he is said to uh, be arriving from north or from east or east-north. And, and everywhere uh, he is described as uh, renewing the seed of the church in a good way. So that is uh, the obvious parallel uh, with the pious king of Russia. Another Catholic uh, quote regarding the great uh, monarch who is uh, uh, compared to, to eagle, it's used the eagle symbol. From the east will come an eagle with wings spread out in the sun, followed by multitude of men to come in support of the son of man. Then Nostradamus continue, of the three water signs will be born a person whose holy day will be Thursday. His name, fame and rule will grow everywhere on land and sea and free the East from trouble. And there was some indication in what uh, Alexander Paramonov said uh, that in the future Thursday could be a very holy day because that is the day of uh, the forefathers and according to him uh, it is our connection with the forefathers uh, that we are mainly uh, missing out on in these uh, turbulent times.
because for him that is of uh, prime importance and it will be our ancestral memory and that will uh, revive the earth. For those who have not seen the Survivors of Atlantis series, uh, I do recommend it because uh, they are kind of uh, the beginning of the end time series. It's uh, actually one and the same saga but uh, divided in two parts and the end times is the second part. Nostradamus continued after great trouble for humanity, a great one is prepared. The great mover renews the ages. In uh, the Zoroastrian apocalyptic uh, writings, the Savior will return as well. Sayoshant, or something like this, is his name in the Zoroastrian context. The Baha'i religion has uh, its own apocalyptic uh, prophecies, very similar uh, to the ones outlined uh, in this series. And uh, they also mention that uh, kind of this uh, era is of uh, 1000 years and uh, the Son of Man uh, is supposed to appear at the end of these uh, 1000 years which according to your history books are 2,000 years, probably just to confuse you further. As far as uh, direct descriptions in Christ in the Catholic prophecies, they are there, but they are quite uh, vague. For example, I saw the beast taking to flight towards the sea again, and, he, and the enemies were fleeing in the greatest confusion. Then I saw... In a great distance, a great legion approaching. In the foreground, I saw a man on a white horse. So there is such a tendency that uh, Christ, or maybe the great monarch, we don't know, is often depicted as arriving on white horse somewhere from the east, northeast, or north. But uh, that's uh, uh, northeast of France, let's say. Another reference, he shall slay the ten heads of the dragon and he shall destroy in the holy land the altar of wickedness. As you can see, all the references are uh, quite vague and do not give uh, details. So it appears that after all we are that uh, lucky generation that will have the chance to witness an incarnation of the Lord. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. So maybe as Alexander Paramonov says, all the tribulation will be very well worth it. So uh, assurances that the Savior uh, will be born again or at least will appear somehow magically in a human form again they come from all sides, they are countless. The sources which confirm it uh, cannot, uh, cannot be counted. So the question, a more valid question is actually, are there any sources that deny that? And out of all the verified uh, sources, I'm saying verified because uh, there are millions of non-verified sources as well, uh, those I'm not uh, including. So out of the verified, there is only one source that says that Christ will not come. And this source is Slava Sivrykova, whom I most definitely still consider a genuine uh, seer and uh, exceptional psychic. And uh, also there is another, uh, well, for me it's a kind of a problem in consistency, uh, she also says hell doesn't exist. She says it's just a, a mental idea. And I was always wondering why she is uh, so different about these two points uh, in relation to all other prophets. And uh, I think I found the answer. Actually, it's written in uh, her own book. It's a compilation of uh, her recorded prophecies. So I found uh, at least the explanation why she believes uh, that there is no hell. And she explained, 
I really don't think there is any hell because I have traveled countless times in the astral realms and I have never seen any hell. But the conditions I saw of life and the forms of life uh, were um, somewhat similar everywhere I went. So then everything fell into place. If you know there is this uh, Monroe Institute Monroe was uh, also a remarkable psychic and he also explored in a remarkable detail exactly these uh, astral realms which are around the earth and are very similar to it. And also Seth uh, describes them and he gave some details about them which exactly match what uh, uh, Monroe says some small details also match and recently I heard a very interesting um, past life regression also of a, a woman who confirmed many many minor details. Anyhow, so um, Slava Sivruk was simply traveled in these realms and she was never given access to higher or at least uh, she says everything was earth-like so she never had a pass for the other realms, which are not only higher and lower, but also they're, in some of them, they're so radically different from Earth that there is no way to say that there is any similarity with Earth. So she simply never went there. And I'm happy uh, this explanation was included as it is, because uh, that means that she, uh, following her own logic, she might have said that uh, Christ will not come in person just because she never saw Christ. So for me, uh, that is a question solved. And I still think she is a genuine seer. And probably uh, it is a mistake because everybody says Christ will surely come and he will come as a person. But probably she was uh, never given a vision of that and uh, she could have... Uh, decided, according to the fo logic she follows, that uh, there will be no incarnation of Christ. Otherwise, uh, she described the apocalyptic times exactly as all the other prophets. So, as far as the external appearance of Christ, uh, the Islamic sources say that he will have uh, dark hair, not necessarily black, but he won't be a blonde person. He will have a beard and uh, loose, shoulder length uh, hair. He is also described as a middle-aged man, in contrast uh, with the Dajjal, who is described in the Islamic sources as uh, somewhat younger, uh, maybe 30-something, uh, while Christ would be probably 40-something when he appears for everybody to view. According to that article, I believe I provided the link in earlier episodes with information, uh, it seems, from Alexander Paramonov. Uh, these both incarnations are already well positioned because uh, the end times have uh, just begun. Christ is uh, amongst the ordinary people, uh, while the Dajjal is, uh, according to that article, already appointed uh, as a, a high level politician. And uh, in his own circles, uh, they have already chosen him for. Uh, Moshiach, that's the Middle Eastern name for uh, their so-called Messiah. So this is a message from 18-year-old uh, Canadian boy. He is too young to be independent and uh, to live on a short notice. The uh, city place of his uh, family who will be fixing themselves, so he is considering uh, joining the Amish and the Mennonites. I would say go for it, 
And uh, if possible, let us know if you connect to them. I don't know if they accept people who have been born in other type of society. It will be interesting to know what they reply to you. But they are also have their types. You know, they have like modernized branches who believe in almost everything but are okay with cell phones. Don't go for those branches. I was having similar thoughts myself, actually, but there aren't any Amish or Mennonites, real ones, here in Europe, so uh, keep us informed how is your uh, saga developing until you can. And a very similar message from America. Well, uh, is it better to join the Amish or uh, some sort of um, secular eco-village? Well, uh, see if anybody is uh, willing to accept you and also let us know if uh, possible what is the situation. This is a very good question. Is there any point in trying to wake up the others? The more he tries, the person says, the more he feels like there is a, like a wall preventing them from altering their perception. And then the person shares that he has uh, lots of material proving all the central nonsense we know of that is listed. But the most important is uh, that he feels that the deception seems to be supernatural going beyond just the brainwashing and the programming to which uh, we have been all subjected by birth. This is really an acute and important observation uh, which you have made. And um, is there any point in trying to wake up others? In general, theoretically, yes. Even in the Holy Scriptures, it is said, even until the last point, until the three days of darkness or somewhere around that time, still there is hope that somebody uh, may wake up and have at least a good thought. It is still theoretically possible. However, if we, the ordinary souls, uh, who are not immune to their black magic, if we uh, try too much, we may fall in the trap of that uh, supernatural, indeed, as you see, black magic, which uh, like makes a barrier and then the person, no matter how much you prove to them and how much solid evidence uh, you have about everything, they are like uh, unable to process. And the trap is that uh, usually we have to use technology to wake up others uh, since they are making it almost impossible to communicate in any meaningful way, other way to lots of people simultaneously. And then if we use technology, even with the intention to benefit others, who knows, maybe we also fall in the trap. Because it's not just uh, the indoctrination and the grooming, the ideological uh, brainwashing, but it is also the technological. And uh, we're exposed to that even if we make a video about the truth. So we have to be careful. And that is why Otrok Pavel is uh, warning, don't touch technology even if you have a good intention, just don't touch it for any reason. And then comes the other danger that uh, now people uh, this, who are trapped completely by the black magic, they will simply ignore the truth. But after a couple of years, when they are completely zombified, they will be bloodthirsty and they will wonder whose blood to suck. And then, oh, I remember a few years ago, there was that man talking against... <clears throat> and yeah... And that's why the saints also warned us in the previous episode not even to talk too much. Yes, if somebody uh, is uh, really approaching you in person and you see that that soul has not yet chosen its path and still has doubts which way to go, then I would say surely talk to such a person and make an endeavor to care for that soul. But besides that, really, I don't know what to advise you. I myself, uh, I will quickly make, uh, without uh, visual effects, I will concentrate mostly on the audio. I will complete this series and a few other videos that are relevant to the end times. And after that, um, I, I have not yet decided what uh, am I going to do. How much will I continue to use this computer? And yet another uh, a similar comment about joining the Amish, coming from 19-year-old Mexican America. American, he's getting uh, rid of his smartphone. 
he will use only books and meditation, he says for me, and uh, he will be leaving the city as soon as possible. This is the sure way. This is the sure way, and uh, even if uh, we are a couple of years early, it's better safe than sorry, because uh, who knows when a new dangerous bug will appear and they will close the roads on hours notice. Then another question, will their deharmonizing stuff really go that deep through our onion layers? She means the onion layers around the soul. Well, if you allow the deharmonizing stuff in your blood directly, it will be like, I mean, you're opening the door for the thieves wide open and then you're asking, oh, will they manage to get in? Now, a different thing is uh, if you are alone in the forest and they are irradiating you without uh, your consent while you are uh, trying your best uh, to have psychic shields and you are not allowing anything in your body, then even if you don't manage uh, to get it right with your shields, your angels will be helping. But the problem with uh, most New Age people is that they will <laughs> wide open in their blood, allow everything and then deceive themselves that uh, I will resist and then their savior will come and it will be all confirmed. You see, the Messiah is also here and everything will be so-called fine. You know, there is something very wise in the Bible, they say, the Antichrist, he will fake everything. He will fake uh, like appearance, uh, speech, ideology, even a short-lived prosperity and justice, you know, he will offer his monetary system, uh, system. All that will seem and look quite okay, quite okay, almost as uh, the real Christ. But there is one, and in the miracles he will also get almost right, at least the people will buy it. But there is one single thing that he can never fake, and that will be the peace in the mind of his followers. And not just peace, but also bliss. Unfortunately, that is difficult to describe because uh, so many people have never even experienced that, what to speak of losing it uh, in... The Christian texts, it is always said, and when one accepts one, we lose the bliss that has been flowing from the worship before, and that's the sure sign to recognize that one has fallen in the trap. But what about the people who have never felt the bliss and have been in this uh, nervous society since their beginning? It will be very, very difficult. So most of the religious uh, people will be deceived by uh, their religious leaders, and will will worship the Antichrist as uh, the real Christ. And there will be many similarities. But if you are really looking for one absolutely sure sign that cannot be faked, look in the heart of the followers of the Antichrist. And these people will be always restless, arrogant, quick to get angry. It will be impossible to have a sensible conversation with them. And they will be told to smile and look uh, happy. But the real peace and comfort inside, that is what they will surely never find. Even when they arrogantly giggle that they get all these nice foods which uh, the unmarked people will be denied. James from Chicago says uh, that he's uh, very worried about uh, what he might have ingested with his American food and what uh, we all have been sprayed with. And he asks about more details uh, of how the foil may work in terms of protection. Well, first of all, James, don't worry too much, because uh, if you still understand that there is reason to worry, that means that their black magic has uh, not swallowed you. We have all eaten from that food, uh, not only in America. In France, people are eating the same, and uh, yet Mary Julie Jehani says that uh, many people will survive over there, so we still have a chance. Now, as far as the foil, uh, I've got a big one and I cover the monitor when I simply listen to something important on the computer. Although 
Now I uh, have the computer on much less than before. Probably I have reduced the computer time five, six or seven times all of a sudden when I heard uh, the Utrok Pavel material. So covering the monitor uh, will surely not uh, neutralize these uh, frequencies that it is emitting. And that's why when I don't use it, like at night, I uh, keep it in the corridor, just the full thing. And the reason for which the foil may have some sort of protection is uh, because Utrok uh, Pavel mentioned that it kind of, uh, from the cameras or maybe from the entire screen, it somehow prints on the skin their... Uh, black magic symbols. So I'm hoping that in the case of the computer the foil will prevent at least that printing. Also I have uh, taped all cameras and all sensors as much as possible, also the switch on button because that's where maybe they get uh, you know access to the fingerprints and then the branches of the black magic could possibly uh, grow inside from there. So I have taped over with uh, foil tape all sensors and the screen I keep uh, covered whenever possible. Now in the case of uh, wrapping in foil the credit cards as I recommended that is uh, so that they will lose uh, connection with the dirigibles which are also there in another prophecy. Um, Somebody else whom I very much respect, uh, he wrote me yesterday saying that he independently has gotten messages from his sources um, about the bug uh, even before it appeared. And then he was also advised to go to the countryside and to keep his uh, phone in a metal pot when he doesn't use it. But that is, of course, uh, if you are not expecting any calls, because uh, then the phone will be uh, will lose connection. So then I also advise to put some sort of a foil barrier between your phone and your body if you carry it on your body. Actually, you should not carry it never on your pocket. Always in some pouch in case you have to carry it, for example, for work. Well, if you have this uh, foil like a barrier between your body and the phone, maybe, maybe it will reduce somehow this, I don't know what kind of devilish printing and uh, frequencies it emits. It may reduce them. And as far as uh, credit cards and all cards with the uh, chip, or even this uh, RFID tags or antennas, whatever you call them. Anything with that, it's uh, when you are at home and you are not using them right away, keep them in another room, definitely in a foil or metal box. Now, as far as this type of tags, uh, they are definitely not as dangerous as a computer or cell phone. But still, it's uh, good to avoid them. Here, they're being used as a part uh, of the biometry, biometric passports. Biometry is another synonym of hell. Just uh, look at the snout of the device which interacts with them. It's MAL in VisiTags. So here, even officially, they admit that they are uh, uh, interactable with in the range of uh, up to a couple of hundred meters for some. Here I found out sadly that they have integrated woven lab labels of the same type which look exactly like ordinary fabric. May it go to hell uh, where it came from. Here they are assuring me that they are putting it even in the bottles with the drinks to, to be sure that we are drinking pure. Oh really? Probably they mean pure hell. I don't know what else they mean when they say that. 
And then I have seen them uh, already in phones, not smart phones, ordinary phones, exactly as Utrok uh, Pavel says. They are in the battery department, but you have to unwrap the battery from what it still seems like normal package. And then you see this uh, same small monster with its own slot, exactly like Parasite. It's connected to the battery so that it can suck energy from it. And after that only comes the real battery. When you remove that uh, wrap made specially for the parasite. I mean, even in the official information about these Invisi tags, they openly admit that they are connected to the database of biometrics. For your safety and security, of course, what else? So, uh, since James is asking me what am I practically doing, well, uh, before I used to go to the shop maybe three or four times per month, now I go one or two times. And I'm quite careful with those uh, cameras at the checkout. I uh, don't let them face directly my skin. I just uh, wear gloves and quickly get out of their range. And then I'm not really that strong to do gardening, uh, uh, really with a meaningful amount of um, fruits and vegetables, but I grow my uh, sprouts and sometimes I go to the forest. Yesterday I went, there were some mushrooms and even a couple of uh, green leaves to graze upon. And then I definitely noticed that the crystals, they overwrite that black magic. That's why I advised you in the previous episode uh, where you could get a, a white sapphire. And I will make one more episode uh, about the crystals. But in terms of uh, wearing those small sapphires on the body, I found out that actually these, the quadratic beads molds, are the best because... Um, the epoxy resin kind of levels on the bottom and then you don't need to submerge the entire small stone in the resin just you kind of uh, cement it on the top and the bottom and then the body the tiny body of the stone can touch you And just a final note on the CBD uh, oil, uh, which seems to be at least for the most places uh, the easiest to get a sacred plant, which can be stored long term. So the note is exactly about the storage. Usually it is sold as CBD oil. However, the oil base in which uh, the CBD is uh, diluted that may go bad in four or five years. So even if that happens, uh, probably there won't be any problem using it because the CBD itself inside the mixture will not go bad. And although one may get upset stomach from a couple of uh, stale oil, maybe I don't know if it will have any adverse effects in such a small quantity. But even if there are any in extreme emergency situation, uh, probably they will be completely overwritten by the effects of the CBD itself. So if you already have oil, uh, don't feel bad about it. But if you have not ordered your supply yet, probably for uh, very long term, like 10 plus years, it will be better to get a CBD paste or CBD crystals. The crystals, they will never go bad. However, they could be less effective uh, than the normal CBD paste or the other formulas because the extra compounds would be uh, removed for the purpose of extracting pure CBD. So, Paste seems to be the best, or when you get a long-term supply, maybe half paste, half crystals, or maybe one-third uh, crystals and two-thirds paste, something like that. The enemy has become so brazen nowadays that uh, anybody who cares for their soul, it is time to run away from smartphones, TVs, computers. That's where the black magic comes from. And run somewhere and live off the land. Just get half a pallet of rice and some seeds. Because uh, we don't even know when will be the next wild storm. <laughs> <laughs>